Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, this project I bought about six months ago. I got the first video of buying it. It's a 1970 Mercury Cougar basket case that someone took out of a, uh, a garage or a barn after it was crashed back in 1977. He went through the process of uh, restoring it or going to the process of restoring it. And I think just kind of ran out of gas on it. And I bought it as a basket case with everything apart, everything in boxes and bags and coffee cans and that kind of thing. Well, it's six months later. I have been picking away at it. The paint needed a bunch of love and it's basically a big puzzle, but this puzzle has extra pieces and missing pieces and <laughs> no instructions or no picture to go by as far as putting it together. I've been kind of working on it by myself. Here, I'll get you walking around while I'm talking and not filming anything. I just kind of wanted to take a project and kind of enjoy the process of assembling it without having to worry about turning the camera on. So that's what I've been doing. The paint was probably the biggest issue. It was really orange peely. I think I have a clip maybe from the previous one I could show. And so I've been wet sanding that back down. He painted it. He was not happy with it. He actually took the car back apart and was going to repaint it. I decided to work with the paint that is on it and that in included a bunch of wet sanding I, I see a bunch like days and days of wet sand but it's come out decent i could have done better there was some still some scratching on the i guess we're gonna call it horizontal surfaces there's my setup in the bucket right there the only thing that i really screwed up on was the driver's door i ended up wet sanding through right in this area I wet sanded through and then down below in the corner I wet sanded through so I ended up reshooting that door fortunately the, the car came with a half a gallon of paint that matched it but unfortunately there's a slight difference I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up in shade between the two of them well I need my lift this thing has been sitting on there for a long time I got some uh, my daily drivers that need a little bit of love so I got to get them on there this car has not run I have never run this car so I figured maybe you can go do that during this video and I'll just give you an update on where it is. I've been working from the back to the front. Uh, again, nothing was on it. The, the doors weren't on it. Half the glass wasn't in it. The back glass wasn't in it. And I've been taking care of everything. I haven't had a glass company or anything come out and do anything. I've been doing it all. The molding around the doors. This was fun. Getting this molding in there with the clips. All the lights. Everything in the trunk. The trunk itself, the weather stripping, the chrome, aligning the doors. So I've had the fenders on and off probably a dozen times because you got to align the doors to the quarter and then the cowl to the hood and then the fenders fudge in between. There's only two bolts in the front fender, but just trying to get all my body lines to match, all my windows to match correctly and roll up, all the belt line seals installed, all those little things. Oh, we'll get to that in a minute. All right, let's so get it up in the air. I'll take a peek underneath. You guys haven't seen underneath the car yet, neither. And let's go check out the underpinnings. Looks like you probably use like a pour 15 on the gas tank. And I don't know if he did that on the rest of the frame or not, but it's all been painted underneath. Most of it looks original. I do see uh, one of the quarter panel dropouts and extension have been replaced. One side, yes, one side, no. Transmission is dripping. But again, it's been sitting a long time. Sometimes the torque converter will leak down when they sit. Looks like it's leaking right at the pan gasket though. Or at the linkage right there. And another thing I noticed too, when I went to go put the car up on the lift and I put it in park, the park pin clicks. It does not hold it in park. It looks like the torque converter's been dripping. What happens is the torque converter is a round circle that's filled with fluid. And then there's a, a point in the center of it that goes back into the transmission that spins. Uh, over time, sometimes the upper half of that fluid can drain out. It's been sitting around the seal and leaks out. Put a new rack in, all the hoses look like they're new. Exhaust is new. He had the engine out, he said, and sent out and the transmission sent out. Everything does look very clean. New front end components, the rack is new. The 
idler arm, pitman arm, tie rod ends, sway bar controls, looks like all the ground wires, power leads, motor mounts, starter, all that's been replaced. It's an AC car, so it's got tinted windows. Exhaust looks a little kitty wampus, huh? That one's needing a, a little bit of adjustment with a floor jack and a piece of wood. I don't know if the light's gonna show it. I think it is, yeah, it's that one right there. So that quarter panel extension's been replaced and then the bottom of the quarter panel on the inside of the trunk, you can see it's been replaced. But I believe the driver's side is still original. And he put a driver's uh, passenger side door and fender on it at some point. Uh, we'll probably figure all the brakes and everything are new, shocks are new, that kind of thing. Looks good. It's a nice clean car for our area. This is a very clean car. And again, it, it got taken off the road, I think it was 1977. You done looking? All right, let's go back up top, show you a quick little peek of the interior, and we'll get on to see if we get this thing to fire up and move. Let's go check out the inside. So again, I, I worked from the back to the front just because I had to go pick a direction to go and everything was just taken apart. I figured that'd probably be the easiest. Uh, you got the seats, the kick panels done, the back window, the rear defrost vent that's up inside there. He already put a new headliner in it, so that's why he had all this stuff taken out. Again, uh, window regulators, window felt, you know, the seals that go on inside the seals, this part, getting the windows to... Uh, adjust correctly because this side was replaced with a, a different there's a, an, an early and a late 70 and there's some differences with the glass and the door so this side has an early on one side I think that's an early and then the passenger side is a late not that it will look any different once it's once it's all together all the door pieces speakers the door over there again is XR7 this one was off of a not an XR7, so I had to go cut the metal for the, the speaker, run wire and harness through it. it. Didn't it wouldn't have that light in there on a uh, standard? All the seals, the chrome that goes around. It's just slow. Plus everything is like like I said in coffee cans. You're picking through trying to find what you need. So you think it's simple. Okay, I'll put the door cranks on it. Okay, go find the screws for the door cranks. <laughs> well, there's 47 coffee cans to go try to figure it out. Each time you do a little bit, like here you go. You know, each time you do a little bit of something, you go through and you, you memorize where the hardware is in different locations. And you go to put something else together later on. You're like, oh, I saw that already. And you have a general idea what box to go look in. And the fenders are just sitting on it. Oh, we were doing the interior. That's all. So, yeah, I had uh, a 69 Cougar when I first got my license. This is a 70 again. And uh, same color combination, white with a black top. Uh, had blue on bluish green interior and was the standard, not the XR7. So this is just a car that's on my bucket list that I want to uh, bring back and have. All right, let's go open the hood. How's that dash, huh? There's a wire or two to get still assembled there. <laughs> yeah. And the windshield I'm going to have installed. I'm not going to install that. That's glued in and uh, with the chrome and all the trim and everything. Although I'd like to try everything for the first time myself, I may pass on trying to go do that. So for some reason, all the plug wires are off on this side. They're all laying back up, up there for some reason. The plugs are in it, but the wires are off. I don't know if they were working on something down in this bay or working on a manifold. I don't know. I, he may have said i just don't have a recollection i have not ever even put power to this car yet so we don't even know what's going to happen it may just go up and smoke <laughs> all right let's get you set up in the stand let's see if we can grab ourselves a battery see what comes to life and see if we can go get her to fire up let's go check fluids first might be a good idea huh i would think this would be clean <laughs> oh yeah He said he drove it. I'm not sure when. You know, with no windows or anything yet, I don't think. He just, but he did put it around. And it looks like we're a hair over. Better a hair over than a hair under. 
Transmission, you gotta do that while it's running. I have a feeling that's already gonna be low. We're just gonna go with a jumper pack for now. Let's see if we can get this in there without beating up on the paint. That's the other part of it too, trying not to screw anything up. Been drawing a current, <laughs> so I don't think anything's on. Let's go inside. Yeah, let's go. Anything light up? We got a directional click in a way. There we go. And I think we should be in park. We're having an issue with that. It's like part of the console. Let's give a quick bump of the key, see if it'll do anything. Nothing. <laughs> that ain't a good sign. All right, let's go start looking. Again, who knows wiring wise what is connected and not connected. It looks like the ignition switch is plugged in though. Those wires are. All right, let's go find out what's going on. And anybody who's ever owned an old Ford knows crossing the solenoid trick which is going to be right there so you want to jump that to that this is the signal coming from the key latches that relay and this is power going down to the starter so if we cross them we should get a there we go Just listen to it actually sounds like the key is off but it sounds like it's got a little bit of spark you hear ticking going on let's uh address whatever's going on with this. Actually, let's go throw a spark plug in it real quick. I thought I heard spark clicking. Yeah, we pick any one of these, I guess. That can be long enough. Yeah. Let's, uh, that should be a good. <laughs> it's a boat spark. Ah, we should be able to use it. Yeah. Why does it have spark and the key's not even on? Something's wacky here. Yeah, I would think with um, half the ignition wires not even being hooked up that it would not have spark. Why it has crank and not spark. Somebody may even have those crossed. Maybe that's uh, not right. I'm just looking for a jumper if anybody ran a jumper to the coil, the hot lead of the coil, which I think is going to be this side. Where's that going into the harness? The harness and away it goes. Hmm. Yeah, so the key was always was in the off position. And it would have been crank. Unless there's nothing. That's this harness going down. And it's plugged into the main harness. I do see this weird jumper wire. What does that have to do with anything? It's not going to be a fuse issue. It's just going to be power to something that shouldn't be having power going to it at the moment. That is just odd. Ooh, this is gonna be fun to put together. Getting the dashes, and then this is the, the dash cluster plugs into that. I do not see anything that is. Uh, it's like stereo. Not sure what that is. Don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, console lights, maybe. All right, I'm gonna go put the key in the on position. I'm gonna give it a crank and see if it has spark. See if something maybe flipped around. Yeah, so the key's in the on position now. Let's see what we get. Where's the plug again? Watch it fire up on those four cylinders that are still hooked. <laughs> Damn it. Hmm. Very interesting. I wonder if something's off maybe on the tumbler part of the key and where the, the ignition switch goes down it's not turning the electrical connector on it and it's just left in that on position that's why it won't crank too you know, the steering wheel is just sitting on it let's see if that's the case if we could see anything anyway uh, not sure where i'm looking at what i'm looking at where it would be
see anything? I'll get a little light. I'm going to go peek around down the side there, see if I can see anything. Yeah, it doesn't look like any of that was ever taken apart. Probably all the original stuff. Doesn't look like it was painted or anything, neither, so. Or the column was out. Yeah, it's just weird. That has me a little confused, too. What's going on with that? That's not just, not exactly factory. <laughs> yeah, so I'm guessing I had a problem in the past because this is the ignition switch. So when you turn the key, you can see the rod going up and down. So that's what's making the electrical connections is this stuff right here. You got two heavy leads, a couple of small ones. I do see some tape up on there and it looks like somebody tried maybe modifying it to go out or it went to a different wire. Let's go get a test light. Let's go poke around what's going on on that and see if we can figure it out. Hmm. I hope you can see. So what I have noticed is, so this right here is the ignition switch part of it. You turn the key up and down, there's a rod going up inside here, making these different contacts. And again, that's the one we were kind of questioning what was going on with that wire nut that was on there. Let's go hook a test light up, see if we can find ground. And uh, let's go poke around a little bit and see if we can see what does and doesn't work or make power or not power or what, any power coming in. So that has power coming in. I don't know if this... So that turns on and off. I would think that would be power to the fuse box maybe. And then one of them should be a crank. Should send power out to one of these for crank. I should probably look up colors. Again, it's a will in the bed. Oh, there it is. That one's crank right there. But it's not going to the starter. So that is red with a blue tracer. And that is going to the wire that is jumped. Oh, we're on to something. So it's red with a blue tracer. And then it got cut off and then it goes to this. And it, does it go back to red with a blue tracer? It does. Let's go probe the other side of this. Make sure we got power going through it. Over to this side when we turn the key. And survey says in there. Let's get that nut right off of there. We still have ground yet. Yeah, we got power going through. I'm gonna go probe by the solenoid. Also, we could go check the fuse box. I took a quick peek. I, I, the fuse box is there and it has fuses in it. Whether that's any good or not could be questionable. So we're under the car looking at the starter. I was up top looking at the starter relay and the battery post and the other star, the other side of the wire going down to the starter, which would be this wire, the big heavy wire coming down, are both on the same side. Like, well, that doesn't make any sense. So I looked underneath, it has another solenoid. So uh, it's not what the factory setup would be. So they have a weird kind of combination going and this wire has to get power for it to crank the starter. So we may still have a problem with that starter relay up top, not doing what it's supposed to, or just not wired correctly. Let's go look back into there. We'll go see if we get a, a, a signal from the key to fire that solenoid up top and uh, chase that a little bit. It, this is definitely just throwing a, a definite another wrench into the, into the works though. Don't want to lose you on this, but I got to try to explain it. So, all right, this is the battery side coming in. See the little plus side going in. Normally you get a, this is a ground, and this is 12 volts coming from the ignition switch. You turn this, it fires a, a coil inside, makes that output input go to that output. That output goes down to the starter. Instead, this has the heavy power wire coming in, heavy power wire going out to the starter, and then they just took a little wire going down to put signal down to the starter to, for the starter to crank uh, the other solenoid down below. That's a different system that we're I'm normally used to. And so that would need to, 12 volts, like I said, if you go to bump 
put that 12 volts to there it cranks like it should um, but we are not getting a signal from the key and it, we still don't know why we have spark uh, maybe it only has spark when it cranks it's hard to say I just don't know quite what's happening let's um check for spark we'll jump get a jumper wire from here to here we'll jump right across it not energize this wire and see if it still does the same thing all right keys off let's go steel 12 volts and we need that plug wire no spark so it has something to do with how that's tied in there so the key's off no spark if i just go to try to crank right on the starter what a weird setup boy this one's got me going a little bit now rightfully i got that wire off i should turn that that light should light up that's the signal coming from the key Let's see if we get anything Go check fuses you know what i got an idea i have a feeling i wonder if we're dealing with a neutral safety switch that is not set up right or not plugged in or the remember i said it, it wasn't feeling like it was in park right let's go try wiggling that shifter around a little bit i'm feeling if possibly we might have an aha moment <laughs> yeah, it's all the way in park be a neutral safety on um, some of that let's go try why is the column moving the column is moving while I'm uh, trying to shift hmm do we get I'm gonna prop you up I'm gonna try wheeling the shifter around while I got the key on could still be that There it is. Now it goes. Now it goes. <laughs> All right, we got that figured out. Good. Let's go uh, get those plug wires back on there and squared away and see what we can do to get her to fire. Well, at least the firing order should be easy to figure out. I have a pretty good feeling that that might be how they go get them on there well i finally hung a light in the engine compartment that might help things a little bit so it's got a fuel filter back here it is bone dry i don't know if there's any gas in the tank or not i probably should have taken a peek but let's go dribble a little bit of fuel in it let's go crank her over and see if she stutters to go fire i also would think that there is a vacuum or should be vacuum leaks we got to look for vacuum hoses that uh the headlights and a bunch of other stuff underneath the dash are controlled by vacuum and i, I know a lot of that's not even connected it's like a, a vacuum canister that's not hooked up a lot of this stuff so i would think that somewhere on the intake manifold there's a tap or off the carb so if, we, if it's running weird when we go to fire it up that's probably why i don't see it right off the bat to you this one here that looks like it goes down to the the kick down for the transmission well one thing i want to do is get the rear axle off the ground because i do not trust the shift pattern of this thing i can see me starting it up and it running full throttle and running us over 
Although that would be entertaining maybe for a few seconds, it's sure gonna hurt like hell for me. So let's go. That's good, well, as long as the tires are off the ground. We're back by the tank and it's got a little drain on it. See if that'll move for us. See if we get gas out of it and what it looks like if there is. Hopefully it's dry because it, I don't know how long this car has been sitting. There is something coming out of it. I'm going to get a cup, let it fill up and take a peek what color it looks like. I do have a drain pan down below too in case I lose the plug. Yeah, there's quite a bit in there. Come on, get started. <laughs> it's pretty dark, pretty cruddy looking. I'll show you. That's not a good sign though, is it? I'm gonna go try Persian for a little while. Actually, it looks like it's even got water in it. I'm gonna try Persian it a little bit, see if we get it to go clear. If not, I'm going to drain whatever's in there. We'll try to get some fresh stuff. I don't want to contaminate the carburetor if it's not already happened to it. Yeah, let's let that pee for a little bit. See what we get. Oh, I got to get in there. Let that settle in the pan as you be getting water sitting in there. And go clean my armpits that are full of gas. Yeah, unfortunately, I would say that it's definitely past its sell-by date. It literally has water kind of going around the bottom too. I gotta drain all that crap out. Hopefully it's not a full tank. Sure hope there isn't 20 gallons in there because I think this hopper is about 15. <laughs> I have a feeling that's a fairly full tank though. <laughs> we'll just have to put that in my neighbor's car tonight when they're not looking. Please slow down. <laughs> oh boy. Why would you fill the tank on a car that you haven't put together yet? Stuck a jack on the other side to tilt the car towards the drain at the last little bit. Looks like I made it with about two inches from the handle. Still have to get that out of there though. It's gonna be entertaining. And yes, of course, I dropped the wrench into the bucket, tightening the drain plug. Alright, see if we can make a mess out of this. Nothing wrong with that gas. <laughs> that is uh, 
Definitely past morning piss yellow. Definitely, I would say a good light coffee or a dark tea. Come to me. I thought I was gonna stick my hand in there, didn't you? I believe there's a way to lock the cap. I forget how that works. Got about a half a gallon of good stuff. <laughs> I hooked up a uh, start trigger. It just goes across that solenoid i took the fuel line off let's see if we can crank it up enough to start getting some fuel and i want to run it till it gets a clean color coming through we could push all that crap out of there or it doesn't go into the carb hopefully the battery uh, jumper pack holds up let's go find out Ooh, that was violent i think i gotta go clamp that a little bit better in the cup <laughs> or at least tilt it down a little see how that works for us I would not expect that fuel pump to give that much of a shot every time. Guess I'm used to little four cylinders. Let's go get that banjo back in there. Get it to... Hopefully this exit right up right out of that. Let's try it again. So I want to do that. I'm going to empty that cup. I'm going to do that so we get a little bit of a better color of fuel coming up to it. Round two. It's taking longer than I thought. You know, it's not helping. It had that big fuel filter underneath, and it, that probably holds a, a cup worth of fluid in itself. Looking better and looking at the filter I can see it, it's looking a little clear. I think that might be the last one we need to do at the end there so looking fairly decent. Come on out. <laughs> yeah sure. You got it this time? I'm gonna say that's close enough. It ain't perfect, but it's a lot better than what it was. All right, you ready? I am. Keys on. Let's give her a little. I've upped my fuel bottle size. Just a little more. To match the engine size. Keys on. Let's go give her a crank. I think we are all set. We're gonna go find out. All right. If that is my throttle, no, that's not my throttle. That's my throttle. Pumping gas up. We have no spark when I load off. That's what's happening. As soon as I let go, it cuts out. So that still needs to be addressed, whatever that issue is. Well, I'm getting impatient. I really want to hear it run because I just barely heard it run. So we're going to just put 12 volts right to the coil. No, oh, that's the wrong part of the coil. There. And now it should stay running. Should. Let's see what we get. And we need a battery. <laughs> Come on. We're almost there. 
yet so close. I gotta let that charge up. <laughs> Suspense. Or I could just use that battery that's sitting on the floor down here that I forgot I had. Hopefully it fits. And a real battery. <laughs> I see it has a charge. Let's go find out. Come on, baby. Oh yeah. A bit of a shake to it. Might have an intake leak, like I said, though. Yeah, it's definitely got a loop to it. To find out which cylinder's skipping, could be even the firing order that I screwed up. There we go. Let's shut her down. Figure out what we got going on. You tell them used to air cool cars. Never we check to see what they have for coolant, if any. <laughs> yeah. cool in it. it is green it's a tinge of green it ain't on there right now is it perfect so i'm going through the firing order i lift up on the plugs and these two aren't even on there neither they're just sitting there are they all like that that one's on. Yeah, so the three on this side were kind of like laying on the spark plugs, but not connected. And yeah, we'll make it run on one side again. Yeah, it actually ran fairly decent for <laughs> being what it was. All right, let me get them on there. And we'll give it another shot. I don't know, maybe you stole the wires off to put on another car. I'm not quite sure why that would have been like that. I gotta get down there and pop them on a little better. All right, now they're all popped back on in place. Let's get, we need our hot wire to the curl. And hit it again. I got nothing. Why do I have nothing? I got no cranky. Okay, so I got no. Now? There we go. That sounds a little better. Grab her up a little. Still a little lopy. We'll let it run for a minute. I like it. Go see. We got our exhaust down. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Here's what I meant by park. That's the park pin bouncing off. I have a feeling whatever's going on with that console is what the issue is. Go pop it in gear. Should we reverse? There we go. Neutral, we'll let that. Go for drive. Don't know what's making that noise. Go 
it'll hit the brakes. Yeah, it's definitely gonna. Sounded better. <laughs> Didn't like that. I think I tricked some cobwebs out. Yeah, she's missing now. I'll let it cool down a little bit, make sure everything's doing okay. I think you just burn all the crap off this coming off around the engine from old seeps and leaks and new paint. Everything's still cold. Valve covers got a little bit of heat in the valve covers. Let it run. A little wobble on the power steering pump. I looked to see if it had oil pressure, if I had gauges. <laughs> well, we might as well go see what the underside looks like. Sounds pretty good. I think you just need to run a little bit. I'm sure it's probably a little bit of crap that's in the carb due to the fact that it was, uh, you know, it had fuel in it and then it sat just like the regular part. So it might be a little varnished over. Sounds good though. Whole thing. See what we get for leaks after I wipe some of this stuff off and see if it continues to come back. Might have to just go hanging down a few little loose ends. Oh, yeah. We're in about 10 minutes now. Should be almost up to temperature. That's more like it. Right back to an idle and smooth. I'm gonna go try, see if we can get it to go fire with the key, whatever's going on. Maybe if you have to go shift around, put it in park. Something's not right with that though. 
That right now should have spark. And it doesn't. Let me go prop you up. And see what we got. Yeah, it's still, still the same thing. Even with the key, you go as soon as you're off a crank. There's there's a primary, but no secondary. So something's going on with that. It could be even part because the, the dash components aren't in it, and maybe looking for feedback from something. I'm not sure, but uh, at least we're to the point where it runs and uh, actually sounds really nice. I'm real happy about that. So <laughs> I think, guys, we will cut this one right here. I'm going to go continue to keep picking away. It's it's too much to to film you know okay let's go put a dash pad on and go look 45 minutes for the screws that fit it and put six screws in it it's kind of boring so i'm just going to kind of bring you in and out as i get to different levels of the car and uh this was one of them so <laughs> i hope you enjoyed it i did i'm glad to uh first be able to fire the thing and uh now that i've owned it for six months i've never even heard it run so uh, i'm real happy about that it was a lot of things in check uh the the clicking with the park i have a feeling just because all this stuff is loose and flopping around i didn't expect the linkage to come back to the steering column but again all that being loose i have a feeling it's not allowing the lever to go all the way in the park and that's the only issue with the park pin hopefully but uh, if not we'll find out on another video right <laughs> all right guys with that thanks for hanging out with me appreciate it i'll see you soon bye so i don't know where i left off because this has been filmed over months and months and months <laughs> anyway she's looking pretty good it's all together Paint still needs a little bit of love. I'm gonna go chase that later. Nothing's been detailed. You know the top's all dirty, but everything is together on the car Except for the windshield that is happening in about 10 minutes We have a, a glass guy coming over to have all that done But it really has come out nice. It's really a good-looking car Take a Quick walk around Again, it still needs to be cleaned. And I gotta work the paint some more. It does have some boo-boos. I got some paint to go fill in and little nicks and scratches that uh, when I go to compound and uh, I'm actually gonna probably wet sand it again and then compound it one more time. I should really get the best of it. You can see the chalkiness in some spots on the paint. That's where we are. Our bits and pieces are ready to go all prepped all you have to do is get the glass in i did not trust myself with gluing the glass in so he's going to take care of that so hopefully uh, the next bit that you see will be the windshield it's a nifty little grease gun huh oh yeah there you go have it I go on this side. What's that? Yeah. Any okay. uh, so tips? So stand it straight up on the on the thing. And now your hand, hands are in position. Keep okay. one hand on this side. Okay. And what we'll do is when we get up there, we're just going to lay it over it. You know, we're going to keep it right in that angle. Yeah. We have control right there and lay it right on it, nice and softly. I'm going to adjust it from there. But I always keep my hand on it so I don't touch the top 100%. Right. But we'll go to that top side for us. We'll bring the top tip right down. The top going in first. We're going to go under this one the first. Okay, like that. Now bring your end to your top down. As high as you can go.
know the beautiful fans out there. Faithful <laughs> clutch. Can we drive this bad guy? We don't want a lot of water in it. about um, I mean, probably 10, 15 minutes before it starts getting tacky. Gotcha. You know, before you got to get in there. But with, you know, this thing should be pretty strong within an hour. Like you wouldn't, you'd have a hard time pushing it out. Gotcha. As uh, a matter of fact, you wouldn't be able to push it out unless you went like real slow and hard. Yeah. But you break the glass before. Gotcha. Okay. So. Yeah. 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 I think that trim had a little bit of a dent right there too. See that little bit of a, yeah, you see that screw nub or something sticking there? out. Yeah, there's a st there's a screw going in on the corner there. Huh. That's why the dent was there from the factory that I knocked out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a little dent in the trim. I'm like, hey, let me go fix that. It was right there, and now we know why. You can even see the little bump that's still in it. Oh yeah. We should have took that out of there, but let me just see if I can bend these down a little. The dent back in it. I'm trying to get below it now. Yeah. You want to pop it back off? I'll put the dent in it if you want. If well, it's really going to fight that, us. You can't take the screw out because you're going to have a hole. Yeah. In there, so we don't want to do that. But let me see if I can get her. I almost had it right then. And that's the factory, too. That's, that top's never been off. Yeah. Can't get her to clip, huh? Oh. Yep, that screw was in the way. Yeah, you know, I'm not. Everyone, 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 every
fry. Good fry. That's better. It's as close as you have to get this off. Yeah, here you go. That's not bad, man. I'll tell you for uh, I took it off. I had, had a big dent in the corner. I'm like, what the hell happened to that? So I'm out there with a little screwdriver <laughs> tapping the dent out, trying to make it all nice. Yep. Nope. Factory. <laughs> so this one we cut off the tab on the corner because obviously it wouldn't come out. What's that? Yeah, this, this, see this? You can see the metal. It's probably broke, maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the metal's still. Gotcha. You see that a half there, but. Um, you can get a little bit underneath, you think? Yeah. Well, I do believe today is the day that we get to go take her out for a spin. Get you caught up a little bit. I did get the rest of the windshield components and wiper blades and that kind of stuff buttoned back up. The front is all nice and tidy. That's a bit of an improvement. And I ran around the building a few times, worked with tweaking the front end by eye as far as the alignment. It was really pigeon toed outward. Pigeon to it means. Uh, <laughs> hold on, I'll get you there. They're bent out like that. So, kind of tweak them in by eye. It still has to go get an alignment. Then I ran it across the street and filled the gas tank. That's about as far as we got because there was a bunch of salt on the roads. Well, we got heavy rains. The salt is gone. I think it's time to go for a spin. Let's go cold starter, back her out of the building, and go for a little ride, shall we? There's a little dash all nice and put together. She gets you out to where the light is. You can see her. Let's go cold starter. That's my low fuel light, but I have almost a full tank in it, so that might be an issue. Yeah, I think that's. Sending unit or something is kapooey. Skipping and stuttering a little bit. I've not really done anything with the tune up stuff on it, so I'm sure I'm paying for that. Whatever it was set up like is how is we we're gonna run it. But I want to kind of get it out on the open road and fog it, flog it. Try not to smash into anything, it's kind of tight. I'm going to hug the lift as close as possible, and we'll hope on the other side. How's that? <laughs> See items that are in our way. I have no passenger side mirror. Get her out the door and let her warm up a little bit. And then we'll go for our spin. So I'm gonna go pay attention to what I'm doing instead of the camera. And I'll bring you back in a second when we're on the road. So you clear her out a little bit. Okay, very lopy. I do know he's got an aftermarket cam in it, so that might be part of that lopiness but we never pulled that carb apart and that fuel was not exactly the prettiest so that might be an issue <laughs> got even got on even brighter So I'm not sure what's going on with that. Worst case, we just unplug it. We don't really need it, as long as my gas gauge works, which looks like about a, what I thought I put in it. I think I put like 15 gallons in it, right around there. I think it was like 30 bucks. It's pulsing a little too, huh? Now, we wait, wait till we get a little bit of temperature in it. I'm gonna go out, close up the garage, move some stuff around. Then we'll go for it. Right? I'm back in the garage. I hope that is coming out just out of the muffler. <laughs> Just water coming out of the muffler. Actually, I see it on both sides. Good. Yeah, that wasn't 
giving me confidence. Definitely still kind of wanders around. You gotta kind of keep correct. It doesn't want to track very well. But it has a bunch of new front end components again, it's never been set. Caster and camber are not set. Toe is definitely set by eye. Kind of looking at the front tire and looking at the back tire and doing your best to square them up with a little bit of toe in. And it's an, it is an older car too, so. See how she does over the bumps. They're gonna go over a set of railroad tracks. Seems like the transmission downshifts a, a lot too. I'm not sure if that's normal or not. It's quiet over the bumps, that, that seems fine. But for a maiden voyage, pretty good. Seems like when I turn the directionals on too, let me see if I can try it again. I'm gonna turn the directionals on, it seems like that gas light goes out. Nope. <laughs> I thought it was a ground issue because of the other side. I just got lucky earlier when I made the turn. As soon as I turned the light, the directionals on, the gas light went off and then I turned it back off and came on. Just a fluke. Charging looks good. Oil pressure is decent, temperature is good, kind of all of them are straight up and down. Tack's working, the clock even works. AC, AC will have to get charged. So in the summer I'll worry about that. I'm just glad all the salt's washed off the road so we can take her out and have a little bit of fun. I want to boot it a little bit and get on it. We're gonna come up to a four-way intersection up here. I wanna see how it idles. See if that improves a little bit. I have a feeling I gotta take that carb apart and clean it. up here we'll just we'll kind of floor to floor through the intersection <laughs> after I stop <laughs> let's see what she does that's yeah, still back huh what if that's trans go oh yeah <laughs> I was on a rolling start too if I was from a dead start I would have smoked them sounds good though huh Slow her down, we'll boot it again. Knock her down to about 20 or so. And hit it. A little bit of pinging. I did put uh, 93 octane in it. Nice. Sounds good, I like it. <laughs> Sounds like all the old car chase movies, doesn't it? Let's do it again up here, let's go up. Got a car coming up behind me, a plow truck. Let's go kind of stop here and boot it. I don't want to try to spin the tires, but I don't want to hear the acceleration. We gotta go bump that time in a little bit. That also could be part of the carb issue. Yeah, she's pinging. Definitely 
brings back old memories. Is that at, at 17, I, I had another car right when I got my license. It was actually a Chevy pickup, but it literally broke down every single day. Every day. Every 50 miles was 50 bucks. <laughs> that was a lot back then. So then I took a loan out for 1200 bucks and I bought a 69 Mercury Cougar. Actually, a loan. That was a lot for that. that was, I want to say that was 1980, 81. Probably 81. I had gotten that. And I terrorized my town. And pretty much, as you get older, you want to relive those, those moments, I guess. And that's what we're doing with this car. We plan on doing with this car. For my remaining days, but I must say, for something that's been off the road since, what, 1977, I think it was? 76, right around there? When it got wrecked, it's doing quite well. Yeah, it's got a weird downshift kind of thing to it. It kind of, you hear it? As it let off, I don't know if that's normal for it to shift down in a second as you're approaching. It doesn't seem right. It might have an issue there. There's a hose that kicks down a, um, got a vacuum kick down sometimes that diaphragm leaks and fluid goes through and it makes it do kind of weird stuff so that might be an issue trying to get the sun out of your eyes yeah of course now I won't do it Let off, you go slow down. It'll downshift right there. Why is it downshifting? Stop and it grinds. <laughs> I don't think it's supposed to do that. I do think we've got a transmission issue. We had to go be something. He had it sent out, he said, and had it done. Apparently, he didn't do a very good job. It has all the gears. I don't see a problem with that, but what would grind? Now, essentially, just a bunch of bands that tighten up on, on different circuits, clutches that slip. Torque converters, nothing in a torque converter that's gonna grind. Got me a little park pin's not gonna do nothing when it's not moving. It's like you know, it has that kind of sound, sound like a park pin that you, tra you you shoved it in park doing 40. The pin's making that vibrating sound. That's not it. Cause it's doing it when it's sitting still. Well, guys, it's uh, two thirds of a tank down on gas now. I've run it through. Oh. 50 miles, yeah. I got 50 miles on two thirds of a tank, but I had fun doing it. <laughs> and it's, it's, I'll give you a walk around of what almost the finished product is. I, again, I still have some more detailing on the paint to do. I got a couple of uh, uh, nicks and chips to go and take out of it. But the ones that were in it from the original, you can barely tell where they are. Had some in the trunk, I think too. Like I said, I still have to go around. There's. That's just us, but here's where a couple of them are. Were. I'm gonna open the trunk. That's all finished. I gotta grab a spare. I don't have a spare for it. I do have a jack that I have stuff to paint in detail. Put that in there. Every light works on the car, except for one reverse light. I got a bulb out on this side. Body looks real nice for what it is. All new bumpers. The original vinyl top. And all the interior lights work in it. It's got toggles up here too to turn on extra stuff. Little map lights and door lights and back pillar lights. And really came out as a nice car. It's gonna be fun to 
having some fun with it. I still have to do the uh, uh, seatbelt, upper seatbelt, and there's like a, a hook that mounts up there, like a coat hook. I have a little diagram where they were. I'm kind of questioning <laughs> where they are, maybe during the summertime at a car show. I go take a peek, I want to get a better idea and grab the measurements. The original clock works. And what do you say? You reupholstered the seats and put a new headliner in. Other than that, I think all the rest of the car is original as far as the interior is concerned. Looks real sharp. All the door jams look good. I gotta go chase some hardware, some hardware I have in places that is not correct, but that's all right. I had nothing to go by. I didn't take it apart. It was a fun project to go do, but um, I did not take it apart. I got a light out. <laughs> Slacker. And the biggest issue right now is the tires, uh, tires, the transmission. It is making that grinding noise when you stop in gear. And I uh, haven't quite figured out what that is. That and that weird downshifting thing. He had that transmission rebuilt. I don't know if this is the original one. I went back and looked at the original footage. That, again, was from 10 months ago. I forgot most of what he had said. And uh, he said he put a rebuilt transmission in it. I have a feeling it's not the original one. It made it sound like he possibly traded one in and got one back. I'm not sure. But a car with the original 27,000 miles. Original, you wouldn't think that would have an issue. I'm not sure if there's supposed to be a mat up above the hood or not. I should probably show you the headlights, huh? The hideaway headlights and the sequential taillights. Check out the back. I love that. When I was 16 and a half, 17, right when I got my license, I think that 17, right around that point, I bought a 69 Cougar and it was 1200 bucks. It was a, was it 12 years old at that time? Yeah, the car was about 12 years old. And I was at a dealer's lot, used car dealer. And when I saw those taillights go like that, I'm like, oh, that's the car for me. Everybody else has a Mustang. They don't have one of these. Can't wait to get one of those, so. I did, I spent $1,200 back then. The funny part is this car has been off the road before I even bought that other car. That's how much time frame there was. That this one sat. Let's go close her up to get the full look. Sounds like we're getting a delivery. Oh, you sexy thing. So there it is in its glory. You can see what the focus does here. And that's what it looked like when it got actually when it got picked up. What do you say? Two thousand early two thousands. So about seventeen years ago, after it was put away in a barn in nineteen seventy seven, when his son wrecked it and he took it away from him. And it was next to cows. And I guess that's what all the the rust that you see on the bottom down there is from cow piss, he said. She definitely took a he bought it as a parts car. Decided to save it. So shout out to Mike for doing a lot of the hard work. I just had to go basically put a big puzzle together. And uh, he did all the other grunt work of getting all the bits and pieces together. So congrats to him for the work he did. And I might as well throw a congratulations out to what I did too before.
I love seeing that. All right, guys, so that's going to be it. I'm going to go sign off, uh, at least for now. I think we're going to have to revisit this one as far as the transmission is concerned. And again, when summertime gets here and we actually get to go tooling around, because uh, the weather's changing real quick on us, they're going to be putting salt back down the road, so I'm not going to run this one anymore. I did get to run a little bit of time on it, which was very enjoyable. I uh, got to do some fun, so to speak, with it. <laughs> I can see it needing tires in its near future, although those are new. I think it's going to need some new tires, if you know what I mean. All right, guys, with that, I'm going to sign off, and thank you all for hanging out with me. I know I didn't get to do much of the work on this one on camera. This one I kind of took for myself to enjoy and not film and just pick away a little at a time and make a little improvements on it and bring it back from the dead. So uh, I apologize for that, but uh, sometimes you have to do those things in life to keep it interesting. <laughs> I guess on that note, we're going to go cut it. Take care. Bye. Gotta warm up. <laughs>